And God said, let her write. See, he could have given me any other gift, but he gave me the gift of words. The gift to express the feelings that oftentimes go unheard and lines were blurred in the making of me. He had to give me a little extra, call me a walk in life's destiny. See, it's guaranteed. I was destined to succeed, and if you stay a little longer, might just give you a new read. And that fresh air that you breathe, just know that it was me. A divine melanin queen. Hey everybody and welcome to the first episode of Her Black Hand the podcast where we talk about everything and everything goes. I am your host Alexis Lawson and I'm so happy that you have decided to kick it with me for the next hour or so. I am a brown skinned woman with brown eyes and full lips. I have 4C kinky curly hair that is flat twisted straight to the back. I am currently wearing a gray quarter zip fleece sweater with black yoga pants purple socks and clear lip gloss (laughs) so let's just get right into today's episode of panoramic panini or pandemic so today we're just going to be talking about life during the pandemic so i'm assuming just like me you are ready for this pandemic to be over you are ready to see your friends again you're ready to travel you're ready to go out when you please and not have to wear a mask that smudges your makeup or doesn't match your outfit I am there with you. I think at the beginning of this pandemic, I didn't think that it was going to last as long as it did. I thought it was just going to be like a, oh, a little, maybe a month in the house and then everything will be back to normal. But here we are almost a year after North Carolina shut it down. I'm pretty sure all of the other states in the U.S. have shut down and we're still here. Though the vaccine has now come out and is being circulated to older people and first responders and essential workers, I do not feel that things will still go back to how they were before coronavirus happened. I think a lot of people think our lives will be the same, not acknowledging that we have concocted these new routines in this pandemic as a direct result of trying to survive, of trying to maintain, of trying to just make it to the next day. And I think a lot of us have had that mentality during this pandemic of I'm literally just trying to make it to the next day. I'm just trying to keep my family safe. I'm just trying to keep myself safe. And I think that's a blessing for all of us able able to sit here and listen to this podcast that I survived a year in a pandemic. I am healthy. I am breathing. I was able to get up out of my bed this morning, though life is not as it was in March or February when the coronavirus came to be and we first learned about it. I'm still here and I have a life. And that's so much more than other people can say, especially for those who family members have died or friends have died or people who have simply contracted the virus and had to experience that. So I just want to talk a little bit about how my life changed as coronavirus started to settle in. Immediately when I graduated December 13, 2019, I came home to Charlotte, North Carolina to find a job. I said I was going to work. But prior to coming home, I had already secured a job that didn't start until July. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to work in fast food. So I got a job at the mall at a cosmetic store and it's not that I didn't like it I just felt like that wasn't what I was going to do I told myself that I worked so hard in college that like I'm going to take this next year that I didn't go to grad school and I'm going to just enjoy my life and I just felt like working at retail working those long and exhausting hours wasn't fulfilling what I had told myself that I was going to be doing and so though I had secured a job that started late in the year In January, I was just like, I really want to do something that I love. But at that time, I had no idea what was waiting for me around the corner. So in addition to having trouble finding a regular job until my full-time job started in July, I moved back home after not being at home for two years. And that was a complete adjustment. Though I still had a space to call my own in my mom's house, I was ready to be out in the world living my life. You know, we have these 
calendars. We have these lists of things that we feel like we should do after we check off things off of our list. And not being at home was one of the things that I wanted to check off after graduating. I'm thinking, yeah, I didn't got these degrees. I need to be out here living my best life, doing what I didn't got these degrees to do. And being at home, I felt like I wasn't doing that. But at the same time, I was aware that a lot of people come home after college. A lot of people stay with their parents until they get married. But for me, I just wanted to be out and by myself. Be- me being out and by myself was really me feeling like, oh, I was having it all together or I was doing it knowing I was not having it all together. I was really all over the place. I really didn't need to be living by myself. And so that really took a lot of getting used to. But as soon as the pandemic hit, being in the house felt so draining. I felt like I was trapped in the four walls of my bedroom. And how do you explain to your family or how do you explain to your your family, your friends that you feel trapped inside a place that you're supposed to feel the safest? I just was ready to get out of my house. And my mom was just very stern. Like, you do not leave this house. You do not leave this house because one, my grandmother stays with my mother, so she has health conditions. So I definitely couldn't put myself at risk for getting coronavirus and I understood that but at the same time for a little bit I was so selfish like I wouldn't wear a mask I, I just took little mini trips to the store to the mall before everything had shut down and now looking back I realized how selfish I was to put everybody in my house in danger and to put myself in danger I wasn't thinking about myself I wasn't thinking about the people who was around me and I think a lot of us had that mentality at the beginning of the pandemic because we didn't think that it was as bad as it was and it it's a shame that it took so many people dying and people literally saying like if you do not wear a mask you will be fined or whatever the law was in your state but it took that much for us to really realize like oh this is a serious thing and it makes me think like why do people have to die why does somebody have to get hurt for us to realize that something is serious and so that was very hard for me I felt like when I went back home and the pandemic started and I was literally trapped inside my house and couldn't go anywhere but my front porch and my backyard I felt like I was back at my lowest state that I had been in college I was so depressed like I was crying and I tried to explain that to my mom and she was understanding, but she really wasn't grasping what I was feeling because she was still going to work. She was still able to leave the house. Now, not saying that she didn't want to be at home with us, but she had to go out. She was the bread provider in our family, supporting everybody in the house. So she had to go to work. And though I'm grateful for that, I felt as though I wasn't being understood because literally I had just came back from college. Like I'm living my best life one month and two months later, I'm on lockdown in my mama house without a job, not knowing what I'm about to do, not knowing where the world is going to go. And feeling all of those emotions, I was just sad. I was so sad with my life. And it took a long time. It took a couple months, not going to lie. It took maybe from March to June for me to really get out of my funk of like, this may be longer than I thought it was going to be. So you gonna either have to strap up or you're going to have to sit down and just leave everybody alone because the emotions that you are feeling are going to eventually rub off on somebody else. And I realized that I couldn't do that. So that leads me into my next point of having your emotions rub off on somebody else in this pandemic. I think a lot of the times that when we're going through things, we tend to hold on to things because we don't think everybody else is understanding or they have experienced the things that we are feeling. But literally, this is probably the one time, the one time in our lives that the people around us actually understand what we're feeling. Our friends, our family, they're literally going through the same pandemic as we are. And so I do not know what I would have done had I not been home with my mom or not been around people to talk to or see physical faces every single day. And I'm so grateful that I had that. And so a lot of people always ask me like, why did you get a cat? Like I got a cat in December, a couple days after I graduated. And it was because in March of 2019, I got a dream. And in the dream, it said a cat would bring me joy. So let's just note that I had never touched a cat, never really seen a cat besides outside the window, crossing the backyard. I was literally scared of cats, like as I am most animals. But that dream came to me in a time where I felt the lowest I had ever been in my life. And I'm like, okay, maybe this is like real. Maybe this cat will bring me joy. And as soon as I got my cat, it was definitely 
something that I wasn't used to. My cat stayed up underneath my bed for the first four or five months of his life and I did not understand why he did that. And so me trying to make myself better and get myself through this pandemic, I also had this little bitty kitten to take care of that I felt like I wasn't doing a good job. Like I felt like I wasn't providing the way he needed me to provide. And I realized that sometimes you just have to let people be and that's the way you learn how to love them best. So when my cat decided to eventually start coming from out underneath my bed, I learned the things that he liked. I learned the things that he didn't like. And me focusing my energy on him really calmed me down and decreased the panic attacks that I would have throughout the day because I was just so worried about life after this pandemic when this pandemic is still going on a year later. So I encourage everybody to go out and adopt a pet if you have one, the funds, you have the time because animals are like babies. They have just as many emotions. They have just as many needs. And I'm actually learning that I am so glad that I do not have any kids because this cat is definitely teaching me patience. It's not only teaching me patience, but he's teaching me commitment. I think animals are definitely a commitment. He has taught me that I have to be patient with not only myself because this is my first pet besides having fish or furry animals that I didn't necessarily take care of and he's teaching me how to just sit and just be appreciative because I think about how I found him in the shelter and he was in this little tiny cage with another black cat and the shelter had told me that this black cat had ran off he ran off a couple days before I got there and they was searching and searching and searching it took them forever to find this black cat but here I was standing in line to see another cat and I saw my cat's piercing green eyes out the corner of my eye and hopped out of line and was like I need to see this cat the woman told me that the cat that I originally came to see had been sick and if I saw that cat I would no longer be able to see Eris who is now my cat and so I was like okay I'll just see Eris first and then I'll see the next cat but All the time that I was with the cat that I originally came to see, I wasn't thinking about him no more. That little green eye cat really caught my eye and caught my heart. Like it was saying like, I need you. Like he needed me as much as I needed him in that moment. And for a while, I was just like, yeah, I got a pet. And in my head, I'm like, no, I got an emotional support animal. Like I have this desire to be around people and pour love into somebody like I like to feel needed and Eris is definitely the animal to feel needed because he is probably the most needed thing I have ever experienced in my life and so not only did he help me get through the beginning of the pandemic he also helped me with this move that I had being my new job. So then July came and it was time to move to this new city that I had never been to besides driving through and start my new job all in the same day. Really in the span of like two days. I moved in and then I had a day break in between and then I started my new job. And so on paper, this job had been everything that I've been wanting. Right where I thought that I should be to get me to the next point of where I wanted to go. And... I was really holding on to that. That was my little push of getting me out of my funk, getting me ready to start new things in life. And it wasn't like that when I got there. And I was distraught. There was no people here. I had no friends. There's nothing to do. There's no black people here. And so I really felt like I was back at college being in Boone, North Carolina. There's barely any black people there. The only black people in Boone is the people who go to App State and there's barely any black people there. So I'm like, oh my God, I left one city to go directly back to another one with a new name. What did I do? And so what do you do when you didn't sign the contract or sign the lease that you can't get out of? You work the job. And so still I'm telling myself, okay, you are here for a reason and in provision you get purpose. So I'm standing in this season of my life trying to find the purpose and trying to find my why in this job. And I'm just struggling. I'm struggling because not only am I lonely, I don't have no friends here. I'm two hours away from my mama. I work more than I ever have. I'm exhausted and I'm just trying to find the light out of this situation that other people are begging for. I realized how ungrateful I was being unintentionally. I was unintentionally being ungrateful and not acknowledging that so many people had lost their jobs, 
lost their benefits. And here I am with a full-time job telling me that even if we have to shut down, we will still pay you the amount that you need to be paid. And I know that that is not enough to provide my happiness, but it should have provided me some type of security. And it just was not. I wanted more than that. I needed more than that. I am the type of person that needs to be out and about at least two, three times a week. And I need to have human interaction. The people here are older. They are older. This is where people come to retire. And I'm 20 years old. I had just turned 20 a month prior to being here. And so I don't golf. I have no interest in golfing. And I probably hadn't seen anybody who looked like me until weeks after I had been here. And that's so, that was so uncommon for me. I lived around black people. As soon as I went to the store, I pulled out my driveway and I saw five black people. So that was a big adjustment. And although I have surrounded cities like Fayetteville and Raleigh, I did not see that demographic. But with all that being said, I am so grateful to live in a time where social media is so relevant. And I am also so grateful to have been so involved in social media before the pandemic because there have been so many weeks, I'm not even gonna say days, weeks where I have not felt like talking to anybody. And though to other people that may seem like that's a bad thing or that I'm not being a good friend, but I did not have the space mentally, emotionally to talk to people. And so I got to keep up with people and see what people are doing without actually having to have that interaction with people. And I know one thing that really stuck with me and really transformed my pandemic experience, that's what we're going to call this, a pandemic experience, is Instagram Live. So there were a lot, everybody was going live at the beginning of quarantine, just talking, trying to see what people was up to because we all missed having that human interaction. We missed hanging out with our friends. We missed just being able to pull up. And so one of my friends began to go live and that's how it all started. So they would have conversations about every topic, anything you could imagine. People would just come on, guest, guest talk, and we would all just talk and comment for hours to the point where we would just literally schedule and be like okay today we're going live at nine o'clock and everybody be there we're going to talk about this and that's really how it began so I met so many dope people that I would never have met had I not been in this pandemic I met dancers I met singers I met designers I met models all of which looked like me and so me being in this creative drought that was a direct result of being in this pandemic and not having the experiences I needed to produce the content that I usually would, I'm just like, oh my God, this is what I needed. I needed to be, let's say, air quotes, surrounded by creative people. And so the piece that y'all heard in the beginning is called God Said. And it said, God said, let her write. There were so many times where this year, I was just like, maybe I don't want to write. Maybe writing is specifically a hobby and I'm trying to make it a career. And one day I just sat with myself and I'm like, no, you are good at this. This is something that you love and you would not have been given this gift, this talent, if you were not meant to use it, if it was not supposed to be the thing that led you to where you're supposed to be. Like I said, in provision, there is purpose. I was provided with this gift and this talent and in writing and poetry and storytelling, I'm going to find the purpose of who is who am I supposed to reach? Who am I supposed to touch? Who am I supposed to talk to? Which is just another reason why I started this podcast. And that poem was really just a mantra for myself. And it was probably one of the first things that I've written during this pandemic because everything else I would write and scratch out write and scratch out and it was probably the first thing that I actually stuck to in the moments where I would get stuck and just say F it I was like no you need to sit here because one day you're not gonna be able to say F it this is gonna be your life so you need to sit here and say God said let me write God said let me write God gave me this gift to be right here in this exact moment and so the next line says he could have given me any other gift but he gave me the gift of words and so I really was struggling finding my purpose in my written craft. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was just sitting and I'm just like, 
do I want to write? What type of writing do I want to do? So I just started trying everything. I had never written a nonfiction piece in my life until this pandemic. And I'm like, yo, I could actually be good at this. Like that is wild to me. But it was so disheartening to see my friends and see everybody on Instagram, Twitter doing these big grand things, especially from just coming off publishing a book at 19. It was so disheartening that I wasn't creating the content that I had felt I needed to be creating and I was very hard on myself. I think that's something artists, people in general are very hard on themselves. And I think one thing during this pandemic, if we don't take nothing else from it, is we need to give ourselves grace. We need to give ourselves time. We need to get out of this hustle, hustle, hustle mentality and just sit and appreciate what we have in the now and allow ourselves to rest. I think that's one thing that I really needed to do to produce what I wanted to do. And still, even to this day, there are weeks where I go without writing anything that I love, but I force myself at the end of the night to sit down and at least, if I don't do anything, write at least 100 words. Even if I don't have anything constructive or creative to say, I don't care if I hit period 100 times. That is 100 characters on that sheet. And I had to commit myself to that because nobody else is gonna commit it for you. And that is definitely something that... I struggle with committing and sticking to my craft and that is definitely something that I have gotten better with over this pandemic. I have been more consistent with my writing and not only writing for publication of like social platforms but writing for myself, journaling and letting things out. That is definitely something in a in a task that I am going to continue even after the pandemic lets up because in those days where I don't feel like talking to people I don't feel like being around people I still have things that went on about my day that I want to get off my chest and so in the moments that I do want to get off my chest or tell somebody about my day I take out my journal and write I write the good things the bad things the random thoughts that I had throughout the day because in this year we've had so much time with ourselves that sometimes we don't even remember what happened at the start of our day We don't even remember what we ate for breakfast. We don't even remember what we wore yesterday. And although that doesn't seem like a problem, do you know how exhausting that is to literally feel like you're waking up just to get to the next day and not having anything joyous behind that? So I've like dedicated myself to finding one thing that brings me joy in these days. It brings me happiness because I've spent too many days in the last year being unhappy. I've spent too many days wondering why is this happening in air quotes why is it happening to me not acknowledging that this is happening to everybody this is happening to everybody around me and that's okay like it's okay to feel the way that I'm feeling just because you graduated a year ago doesn't mean that you need to have your life all together just because you're not working the job that you think that you should be working right now doesn't mean it's not a good job just because your poem that you wrote wasn't the best doesn't mean that it is the last poem that you'll ever write we just have to get out of the mentality that this pandemic is indefinite and we're never going to get our lives back our lives is what we make it and right now i know that it's easier said than done to just find our new normal but i don't think people realize that our new normal is going to change soon as a normal comes about Everything is different. Everything will continuously be different, just like years prior to the pandemic. Nothing is the same. You're not the same person you were 10 years ago. You're not the same person you were before the pandemic. So we just have to look at it as this is just a hump in my life. This is not my life. I will not let the emotions from this pandemic consume me, overtake me. And anything that I cannot handle in this exact moment anything that I cannot get a grip on I'm going to release because I don't have enough room for that I don't have enough room to carry that right now and that's okay and we just have to be okay with saying that that's okay so I hope you got to get a glimpse into my life during this pandemic and something that I said really resonated with you and ultimately helped you realize that you're not alone in this pandemic We're all in it together. We're all experiencing things for the first time because we have never done this before. This is all something that's new to us. So if this is something that you enjoyed or a talk that you enjoyed or just something that you needed to hear to realize that you are not alone and there are other people in this world going through the same things, feeling the same emotions, having the same experiences as you, then just save this podcast and come back to it when you need a moment. Come back to it when you need to realize that 
Sometimes life seems worse than what it is. Sometimes we just have to take a moment and realize that if I can't handle it, then I can't deal with that right now. And that's okay because I'm giving myself grace and I'm giving myself space to rest so that I can be productive for the next day. Because right now we're constantly fighting a battle for our lives and staying healthy. And that's not something that we should take lightly. And every chance that we get, we should applaud ourselves because we are doing this. We are surviving a pandemic, panoramic, panini, Panasonic, whatever you want to call it. We are surviving this pandemic whether people want to believe it or not this is going to be a moment in history and one day you're going to say yeah i did lift that and this was my experience so if you are liking what this podcast is giving you and the vibes that we are having then don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we exit today's episode so that you can be notified every time a new episode is released we will be posting episodes every tuesday say it with me every Tuesday. So don't forget to come back every Tuesday to hear new words with me where the Her Black Can podcast talks about everything and everything goes. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. It has been a pleasure to talk to y'all and I'll catch y'all in my next one. Peace.